All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the coffee and the bagels are in here today, so but go ahead and help yourself. Um, we won't let it distract us. So the slide and the things we're going to cover today are the, mostly the budget and a business plan and, and, and SLAs. SLAs go into your business plan um, as one of the standard line items, but it's just they're good to have for your lab anyway, and Chris is going to go over the reasons why. Uh, can you pass that down to Gayla, please? Thanks. All right, and what, another thing about today is we're going to jump in and out of the slides because the slides were built to talk about fees and then talk about the business plan and the budget. So we'll kind of um, leave the slides for a little bit to do a big fee calculation spreadsheet that we received from the University of Northwestern, and, we've, and they gave us the, the ability to unlock it to make it useful for OSU and for anybody who wants to use it, actually. So let's go ahead and get started. Some of the things on these slides will be a little bit of repeat from the last time. So it's been two weeks since we've been here, so hopefully it'll be good reminders. Um, basically, we're going to cover rate setting rationale, an Excel tool for determining rates, and then there's some references, references at the end of the slides for you to, they're, they're great people on campus that if you have questions and where some of these regulations came, came from. All right, so fees or rates or charges are the amounts of charge, the amounts charged for goods or services. So like we discussed last time, they have to include all of your allowable costs. And um, the most important thing here is if the calculated rate is higher than the operation wants to charge, the department may choose to support the operation. So like last time we talked about subsidies. So you can either get an internal subsidy from the university or you can get an external subsidy from a sponsor. And for the cancer center, those external subsidies are from the cancer center support grant. Or if you are a CCTS supported core, it comes from their, is it a P30? Which, their grant mechanism. I don't remember which yeah, one it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're a P30. They have a different yeah, grant. Um, if the actual costs are unknown, then you need to go based on your best guess or historical estimates. We talked about last time that if you don't know your anticipated usage because you're a new core, you have to kind of go out and see what customers are coming in, who do you think is going to use your services, are there large projects that you know of, you're buying a piece of equipment because you know a bunch of projects are coming in, those types of things. Um, and so we try to use your best guess if you're looking at uh, usage. Again, we go back to A21 or the uniform guidance. You can't include any unallowable costs like advertising, alcohol, equipment, those types of things. And rates must not intentionally undercut the prices of any business in the private sector. All right. Here are other examples of unallowable costs. We covered these last time, but just to reiterate what we cannot put in. Entertainment, advertising, lobbying, contributions or donations. We clarified that last time also, contributions or donations that the lab makes. Contributions or donations that are made to the lab, those would be subsidies, and those would be used to decrease your rates. Fines and penalties, personal expenses, if you want to supply your lab with um, all new track suits from the Buckeye Corner, that's not really something that we're going to put into our fees. Bad debt, again, those are debts that are incurred in the previous year from invoices and from customers that haven't been paid yet. So if you have a bunch of invoices that aren't paid and it's creating a deficit in your account when you create your fees for the next year, you cannot roll that bad debt into your fees to then increase your rates. Alcohol, just good to not charge on any sponsored project or build into your fees. And then the A21 guidelines that we, the FAQs that we went through last time, kind of explain all of these things. All right, the facilities and administration costs. Are any, is anyone familiar? A lot of people here are probably familiar with F and A rates at the university. For most grants right now, it's around 54%. And for clinical trials, it's around 26 the last time I checked. So you're, you're allowed to put these in as part of your charges if you are going to give it back to the university. We're not really set up in the, and I'm talking about this from Nationwide, and if you go somewhere else, some other universities allow the core 
to recover that FNA rate, but then they have to give it back because they have a different mechanism than we do. But at the university, they charge on top of what we charge. So if we're charging a grant $500 for our service, we don't need to charge an FNA rate. When we charge the grant, OSP is going to charge an FNA rate and, and, and collect it from the grant. There are other universities and institutions that don't do it that way, where they have the core collect it and then give it to the university. Um, this kind of falls along with lines of overhead charges. For all goods and services sold here at the university, the university charges the 5.7% overhead. We collect that in our fees and we build it into our fees as one of the allowable costs. Because at the time we collect the money from our customers, the university takes automatically 5.7%. And the way they do that is because you're using an earnings fund to signify to them that if any income comes into this earnings fund, it's ours to take 5.7%. Not saying you should not use the earnings fund to get away from that, I'm not saying that at all, and that you should not do. <laughs> so just so you know. <clears throat> um, most service centers cannot charge for indirect costs. So, like I just like I just said, um, we could be double we could be double counting if we charge for F and A costs because the university is going to charge us for F and A rates. And for those of you who don't know, F and A rates are typically the, the charges that the university builds onto things for sponsored for sponsored money to then pay for facilities and lighting and plowing and um, those types of things, on-campus facilities. All right, additional considerations. If there is an active grant or, or project supporting the service center, then this must be recognized as revenue and used off uh, to uh, offset the exchange rate or the recharge rate. Those are our subsidies that we talked about. If an instrument paid for by a project is paid for by a project, then depreciation cannot be built into your fees. So that we covered in the A21s last time. So if you get an S10 grant or a high-end instrumentation grant for your project and or your, your equipment, because it was paid for by NIH, you cannot build that into your fees to then charge sponsored projects with it. Surplus cannot be used to pay for capital equipment, but depreciation can be placed in a separate fund for equipment replacement. If the fund, um, it, you can build the depreciation in if it was purchased by university funds. So those two probably should be switched. So if you have depreciation, move it into another pot, that money can be used for equipment. But the depreciation can't come from equipment that was paid for with federal funds. Again, university charges a 5.7% overhead. You might see this in your financials. It goes to account 66901, and it can be included as a direct cost. All internal users must be charged the same rate. No hookups for your friends. So all OSU people get charged the same rate, and we also want our federal users to get charged the same rate. We can charge. If, if, they're, if they're inside the university, they're obviously going to get charged the same rate because that follows the university requirements. But if it's a federal, a federal person from outside the university, we want to give them the lowest rate possible and we want them to get charged the same rate. So if we have the University of Michigan and the University of Wisconsin, their federal people should get charged the same rate. It might be a little different than ours for our internal rate because the reason is, is we've taken off our internal subsidies. So if we have a core that is sponsored by the government or we're charging federal funds, that's their, their federal subsidy. But then that core is also heavily supported by the university. We can take out that subsidy that the university gives us to create our federal funded fees. Does that make sense? I can do a, like an example on the board if you... There are, so Chris is actually, sorry, Chris is one of our core directors with, at the Cancer Center. With, um, so she's, she's laughing because we get this question all the time. And 
the question for the microphone is, what happens if a PI pays for all of or a portion of a piece of equipment that's going to go into a core? And the answer is, you cannot give them a different rate. They can have priority on the equipment, so their projects can go first. Or you can split ownership of it with the PI. So if the PI pays for 50% of it, the core then own, um, if the core, if the PI pays for everything, the core can have whatever percent of ownership that is. So then the core would have to pay that percent of the service contracts to show that it's part of theirs. But anything that that PI does on that piece of equipment is not counted under the core. So if you're a cancer center core, that's really important to us because if that PI is a member, we want to track any research that PI does, any grants he gets, any publications he puts in. But if he's doing it separately outside of core usage on that equipment, we can't track any of it. So we actually try to stay away from those arrangements just because we usually want to track all activity that's done on an e equipment. But the answer to your question is they can have priority on the equipment or you can share usage of it and the core can use it 50% of the time. The PI can use it the other 50% of the time. But the core should be paying 50% of the supplies, service contracts that go into running the equipment. And then they should build that 50%, those charges, into their fees. Okay? So basic, calcula basic requirements for fee calculations. Um, it's basically going to be all of your operating expenses divided by your anticipated usage. That's the basic, most basic formula for creating fees. There are other more in-depth fees. Krista's core has 60 to 80 different fees, and it incorporates all of her staff time, all of the supplies and reagents, and the service contracts that go into providing those things. The, her fee calculation is not simple, like another one of our cores. They only do things on an hourly rate. We take all of their operating expenses and divide it by the anticipated um, hours that their techs can actually provide service. So it's one simple hourly rate. Um, fees, again, from the last time, they have to be given to the university. They can be submitted via PeopleSoft, or they can be submitted on a spreadsheet. Um, and then you can find all current rates for the university at this website here. So when you submit your fees, it's not like they don't go anywhere or do anything with them. They actually publish them on the university's website. Earnings operations must review all of its rates annually. The government says every other year, OSU says annually, during the budget process, which is usually in the spring. Usually the, the university makes budgets are due sometime mid-March, and then fees are due sometime mid-April. Yes, I believe so. And it says, regardless of whether or not resubmission is required and any appropriate charges should be made during this, changes should be made during this process. So even if nothing is changing, you still need to let the university know what your fees are. All right. Again, back to the basic calculation for um, determining your fees. Take all of your costs. If you've done your budget, and that's why they do budgets first before the fees, so you can really think about in your budget what is going to go into this year running the core. So take all of your costs, um, supplies, labor, maintenance, and all of your subsidies, any surplus or deficit, so add on your surplus or take off your de deficit, and then, or actually take out your surplus, add on your deficit, and then any depreciation for equipment not purchased by the government and divide it by your anticipated usage. Questions on just your simple, basic calculation. Okay. So here, and it might be kind of hard to see, is a little bit more complicated. Not the most complicated, but it's a little more complicated. So this is a rate setting example from, his name is Mike Ziani. He ran the um, genomics core in plant biosciences. This is how he came up with his sequence charges per reaction. And he took, and I'll just describe what this is showing, he took 
and made a list of all the consumables that go into running one reaction. And he broke it out into what is that cost for each of those components. And then he said, well, how much out of each of those do I need for just one? And then he broke it down into what it takes to do just one. And those, that's these calculations. And then he says, how many does he think he can do? And it's 1,000. So he takes all of his, all of his total costs, and, he, and then what he did was a plate, if you're running a plate on the real-time PCR machine, it runs up to 96 samples. But not everyone's going to give you 96 samples. So he came up with an aggregate cost of, on average, we have around 88. So some people are going to give us more, some people are going to give us less. But at the end of the day, it should average itself out. So he took 88 samples and divided the total cost to run one plate. So that's what he was figuring out. This is what it costs to run one plate. So then he comes up with a, a sample charge of 222. So then he, um, he did, what is our charge per sequence reaction? It's $10. So he went from the actual cost is 222 to charging $10. And a lot of people question this, and he's not here to defend himself. I would never charge $10. That's a little too high. But what he's doing was there was another service, and when he'd give this talk, he would say there was another service that, that when he figured it out, cost like $50. But he could never charge anybody $50 for it because they thought it should cost 222. So he reduced that fee to more reasonable costs, more like $5, but he increased this one to $10 because people will pay this for this um, service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you, you make those decisions kind of based on market. Um, we don't want to gouge the market, but if people know, like, oh, you're going to charge $50 for this. Well, there's other cores on campus. There's not only other, because you got to think about not, who are your, who's your competition. There's a lot of duplicate cores on campus. So your competition on campus doesn't charge near $50 for that. And then there are vendor, there are actual third party vendors who provide many of these services. They don't charge anywhere near that. So we want to stay in line, but we don't want to lose money. So he lowered that other fee, but he knew based on market that this fee was reasonable, so we increased it. We do this a little bit in Chris's core. Um, so within a core, you can subsidize services. But if Mike Siani's core used to be, it was in the CCC, which it wasn't, I couldn't take money that he made and give it to Krista in her core because you can't subsidize cores or other departments with core money. But you can subsidize services within a core. You look like you have a question. No, I mean, if you have a surplus of money within your core, <clears throat> that money rolls over to the next year, and you should reduce your fees by that dollar amount. So the, the name of the game in cores is to try to break even. You want to try to stay as close to breaking even as possible. You don't want to make money. Um, but if you do make money, you need to reduce that amount. 